You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, we're starting to find out who is what, what they belong to, what real philosophies they subscribe to, and who's got guts and who doesn't. That's right. Now's the time to look around and call the ranks. Get rid of the chicken pluckers and the whiners and the crybabies and recruit strong people who didn't even know there was a militia that they could join. In the state of Michigan, one of the broadcasts that was demonizing the militia of Michigan flashed their phone number on the television screen and they have never, never in their history had so many calls of people who didn't even realize there was a militia who want to now join. So thanks, thanks to the scumbag communist news networks, the militias are growing. People are fed up with the lies and the propaganda and the flat out-and-out bullshit spouted from people like Peter Jennings and Connie Chung, Dan Rather, Ted Koppel, Barbara Walters, Rush Limbaugh, and all of the other puke-faced traitors to the Constitution of the United States of America. Those who profess to profess to support freedom of speech only for them. Not for anyone else. Anyone who disagrees with these liberal Marxist puke-faced scumbags is demonized. No, we're not allowed to speak. We're not allowed to expose their lies. Well, I got news for you. We are allowed and we will continue. Nothing is going to shut us up. Nothing you do, nothing you say, they will stoop to anything. One woman from ABC actually went to WWCR and told them that she had permission from me for them to give her tapes of my broadcast. Well, they're not fools at WWCR. They called me. And boy, was she embarrassed. Caught in another lie. And just for the ears of all the rest of you lying scumbags, should you attempt it, all of my videotapes, all of my audio tapes, whether labeled as such or not, are copyrighted by William Cooper. They are not to be played on television or radio or to any audience whatsoever without my express written permission. And if they are, I will sue you for every single penny I can get within the law and to the fullest extent of the law. I've had a lot of experience with the media folks. They don't fool me like they fool most of you. They don't get me on a camera to tell them the truth and document what I know. And then take that videotape and chop it all up into little pieces and then put it together again to make somebody look like an idiot. That's what they do. That's what you've been watching. On the special on ABC tonight, up in the corner, they have 
anti-government. Little subtle brainwashing there. No matter what the person on the screen says. See, they never knew when they were taped that they were going to put anti-government up above their head. Or that they would chop up what they said out of context to make them look like idiots. The press is the propaganda arm of the Marxist socialist New World Order. There is not one American amongst them. They are traitors. They have discredited themselves. Have no truck with them. Do not grant any interviews with them. Do not allow yourself to be videotaped under any circumstances. Don't even talk to them. The minute you realize that you're talking to the press, if it's on the telephone, hang up. If they're at your door, close the door in their face. And don't bother being polite, because believe me, if you talk to them, they are not going to be polite to you. They will vilify you. They will demonize you. They will lie about you. They will chop up the videotape to make you look as bad as they possibly can. If you want to go on live radio, do it. Any live radio talk show, do it. Make sure you have your facts. Make sure you understand the law. Make sure you understand who you are. And don't open your mouth unless you know what you're talking about. And if you're in a militia, don't ever talk to the press. Don't ever issue a press statement. Say absolutely nothing. Allow your leaders to do the talking. That's what they're for. What's happening in this country has only happened before in this world in Marxist, socialist dictatorships, in the old Soviet Union, in Cuba, in Nazi Germany. It has never before happened in this country to the extent that it is happening now. Oh yes, the press has lied before. Oh yes, the press has demonized people before. Oh, yes, we've always known that the press can twist facts and make the truth seem like a lie and a lie seem like the truth. We've always known that. But we have never, ever realized the full capability of these scum until now. And what has happened to the backbone of America? Where are all those people who used to be proud to be called patriots? Where are all those people who used to be proud to say that they would protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic? And where are all the veterans who swore that oath when they went into the military service and have never been released from that oath, to my knowledge? Well, I don't know where they are, but I bet you within the next few weeks we're going to find out. And I believe this is going to backfire on these socialist Marxist pukes like they never dreamed. Like they never dreamed. They're telling America that Christians are terrorists. That Fundamentalists of any religion are terrorists. Specifically, fundamentalist Islamic are terrorists. Patriots are terrorists. People loyal to the Constitution are terrorists. Constitutionists are terrorists. Militiamen are terrorists. Now, to my knowledge, the way I was reared, that includes just about everybody I've ever known in my entire life, and everybody that I know now, and if I were younger, I would say it included everybody in this country, because fundamentalism includes Orthodox Jews, and includes people who adhere to the basic Religious beliefs of the Buddhist religion? That's what fundamentalists believe. 
in adhering to the basic tenets of the religion and not bending to the will of the new age. That's what it really means. And you know something else? I know a lot of people in the New Age movement who are staunch patriots. Staunch patriots. So these people in the press are slapping in the face every loyal American that lives in this country. And it's going to backfire upon them. In spades. You watch and see. Don't go away. I'll be right back. And tonight we're going to talk about the militia and the law. All the things that they don't tell you on television. And if you're a new listener, you listen very carefully and then you go back and listen to the lies. The militia are the backbone patriot people of this nation who will fight and die to protect you and the Constitution and this country from any enemy, foreign or domestic. And those who want to subvert the Constitution and destroy this country and bring into being a totalitarian Marxist state had better watch out, because if you push us too far, we will restore this Constitution to its rightful place as the supreme law of the land. Those who have committed treason will be arrested, will be brought before a grand jury under the law. If they are indicted, they will be tried. And if they are convicted... They will hang by their neck until they are dead. And that is the truth. You want to take our liberties away? Not without a fight. You want to propagand us and call us names and try to demonize us, the people who made this country great? Not without a fight. You want to pass draconian legislation and make the president a dictator? over an empirical government, over my dead body. And I'm not the only one in this country who believes this way, as you will surely find out. Those arrested for the Oklahoma City bombing have not been charged, have not been tried, have not been found guilty of anything. And in this country, you are innocent until proven guilty. None of them have been or ever will be connected to any militia in this nation. They are not militiamen. They are not patriots. The one whom I have investigated, Timothy McVeigh, claims to have participated as a volunteer in a mind control operation in the United States Army and was implanted with a microcomputer chip. He has been telling his friends this ever since he left the United States Army, and nobody has listened. He even claims that the United States Army could follow him by electronic surveillance of this chip and knew where he was all the time. You don't think it's possible? Start studying the developments in mind control techniques and the experimental psychology of Dr. Lewis Jolyon West, who was sent to Oklahoma City. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Nazis were socialists. The socialists don't want you to know that. They want to call us Nazis. You see, there's a scale. It's called right and left. On the left, the far left, is communism. Total, complete control and ownership by the state of everything. Just a little above that is socialism. Fascism. As you go toward the middle, you become finally in touch with some reality and you get near Republican constitutional government, which this country started out to be. It's not anymore. And if we're not careful, we're going to lose it all. As you go farther to the right, you find less and less control and more and more individual responsibility and freedom until you reach the far right, which is anarchy, not Nazis, not fascism. You find that with the puke-faced little whiny liberals who have to have protection by the state from everything. 
They're irresponsible. They don't believe in anything. They think this is it. There's no God. There's no hereafter. If this is it, I must have the supreme protection. The state may take care of me, must educate me, must change my diapers, must give me a job, must protect me, must entertain me, must tell me when to go to bed, when to get up. Children. Listen to the news, ladies and gentlemen. Those are children whining and crying and blaming because somebody is taking their toys away. And let me assure you, if we were not really hurting them with the truth, this would not be occurring. And that is the truth. Now let's get to the militia. <laughs> oh yes, let's get to the militia. I'm holding in my hand. Well, let's go to the other one first. I'll start with my state. You're going to have to take care of your own state because I'm not going to do the research for everybody. You see, they're telling you that what we're doing is unlawful, illegal, wrong. We're demons. Somehow, we're threatening everyone. The truth is, we're the last protection against a dictatorship. The Constitution of Arizona, Article 2, Section 26, Bearing Arms. The right of the individual citizen to bear arms in defense of himself or the state shall not be impaired, but nothing in this section shall be construed as authorizing individuals or corporations to organize, maintain, or employ an armed body of men. They're talking about a private army, and it is clear in the references here. In section 26-115, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, that's section 26-121, militia, composition of militia, the militia of the state of Arizona consists of all able-bodied citizens of the state between the ages of 18 and 45 years and all residents of the state between such ages who have declared their intention to become citizens of the United States except. And it lists a bunch of exceptions. Among the exceptions, ladies and gentlemen, are persons exempted by the laws of the state of the United States, idiots, lunatics, totally blind persons, and persons convicted of infamous crimes, judges and clerks of courts of record, state and county civil officers holding office by election and members of the legislature. The purpose for that in the laws of the state of Arizona is because if those people in the government who were subverting the government and oppressing the citizenry were also in command of the militia, the purpose of the militia would be destroyed. And it goes on. There's many more. There's much more. There's an awful lot here. But we only have an hour. This is all available to the press. They don't tell you this. You see, whether you know it or not, or whether you like it or not, if you live in the state of Arizona, and you are within the parameters that I just gave you, you're a member of the militia, whether you like it or not. And the militia is not the National Guard. Oh, big surprise, huh? Oh, Connie Chung didn't tell you that? Well, no wonder. She's a liar. What was it that she said to Mrs. Green Gingrich? Oh, you can tell me, dearie. I won't tell a soul. You believe these scum? They're the scum of the earth. They are beneath contempt. In fact, when they're not on television, you can probably find them on the bottom of the ocean because they are the lowest thing on earth. In fact, they are lower than the lowest thing on earth. The lowest thing on earth is whale feces. And you will find that on top of the people that you see on television. United States Code Service. Lawyer's Edition, Title 10, Armed Forces. 
Chapter 13, The Militia. Section 311, Militia, Composition and Classes. The militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age and except as provided in Section 313 of Title 32, 32 U.S.C.S. Section 313, under 45 years of age who are or who have made a declaration of intention to become citizens of the United States and of female citizens of the United States who are commissioned officers of the National Guard. The classes of the militia are, one, the organized militia, which consists of the National Guard and the naval militia, and two, the unorganized militia, which consists of the members of the militia who are not members of the National Guard or the naval militia. Why don't they tell you that? Do you know? Have you bothered to ask them? Do you even care? These people are liars, ladies and gentlemen. Militia duty exemptions. Section 312A. The following persons are exempt from militia duty. The Vice President. The Judicial and Executive Officers of the United States, the several states and territories, Puerto Rico, and the Canal Zone. Members of the Armed Forces except members who are not on active duty. Custom House Clerks, persons employed by the United States in the transmission of mail, workmen employed in armories, arsenals, and naval shipyards of the United States, pilots on navigable waters, mariners in the sea service of a citizen of or a merchant in the United States. Why are all these not available for militia duty? For the same reason, ladies and gentlemen. Some of them are necessary to the fundamental operation of the country and of commerce. And some cannot be. Because of the people in the government who were subverting the government and oppressing the people were in control of the militia, then the purpose of the militia would be destroyed. Do you understand Oh, I'm not finished. Oh, no, I'm not finished. I am sick to death of these liars. Title 10, Armed Forces. Chapter 13, The Militia. Militia composition and classes. A. The militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age and, except as provided in Section 311 of Title 32, under 45 years of age who are or who have made a declaration of intention to become citizens of the United States and the female citizens of the United States who are commissioned officers of the National Guard. The classes of the militia are the organized militia, which consists of the National Guard and the Naval Militia, and two, the unorganized militia, which consists of the members of the militia who are not members of the National Guard or the Naval Militia. There's a lot of you out there listening don't even know you're in the militia. You are in the militia. And if the leaders of the militia call you up and you fail to be called up, you can be courts-martialed and jailed. Did you know that? Did you also know that in the tradition of this country, any competent citizen can call up the militia? Were you aware that under the law, when you call yourself up armed with a, mo with a weapon to protect your property or the life of yourself, your family, or someone else, you have called up yourself as a militia of one? Did you know that when the sheriff calls up citizens and deputizes them, he has called up the militia. Did you know that the militia exists, whether or not the press says it exists, whether or not the Communist News Network, and they have a research division, they know all of this. They're just liars. Did you know that if you fit the parameters that I have just read to you, 
either in your state or with the federal government, you are a member of the militia. And if your state has no laws concerning the militia, you are still a member of the militia of the United States of America. Did you know that? Did you know that if you're going to be a member of the militia and could be called up as such under the law, it is absolutely foolish not to have a structure of organization and to know what equipment you should have and to have practiced so that you don't go out and shoot somebody or trip over a curb and shoot yourself or just absolutely make a stupid fool out of yourself and destroy whatever operation you are called upon to perform. The men and women in this country who belong to the militias are responsible citizens fulfilling their role under the law. Under the law. Legally, lawfully, and it is their duty, and it has always been the duty of the citizens of this country to function as members of the militia. And it doesn't stop there. Do you know that under the law and in the traditions of this country, anyone, even if they don't fit those parameters, can volunteer if you're over the age of 45, you can volunteer. Did you know that in Title 10 of the United States Code, it says that if you have ever served in any branch of the armed forces and have an honorable discharge, that you are a member of the militia until age 65? Did you know that? No, you didn't know it? Nope. Some of you knew it. Those of you who are in militias know it. The rest of you stupid sheeple fit the description that the Marxists have of you. A nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. That is exactly word for word what they believe you are. And that's why they're able to propagandize you and lie to you and lead you around by the leg or the ring in your nose or the puppet strings fastened to you and when they call the tune and the piper plays, you dance. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're stupid. Ignorant, apathetic. And you'd better stop. Because I'm telling you right now, what occurred in Nazi Germany will occur again here. Very shortly, if Americans do not wake up. If you do not wake up. Now, if the militia does not exist, ladies and gentlemen, what are all these laws concerning the militia? You see, it doesn't say that in an emergency, Congress will recruit and organize a militia. It says Congress will call up the militia. And the militia is what I have just outlined to you under the law. Now let me read you something else. Where disobedience by a militiaman to a call to military service is punishable by fine, such fine is deemed an equivalent for his service and an atonement for his disobedience. The Pennsylvania Act of March 28, 1814, providing that the officers and privates of the militia of that state, neglecting or refusing to serve when called into actual service in pursuance of any order or requisition of the President of the United States, shall be liable to the penalties defined in the Act of Congress of February 28, 1795, or any penalty which had been or thereafter should be prescribed by any law of the United States, and also providing for the trial of such delinquents by a state court-martial is not repugnant to the Constitution and laws of the United States. This information and you rub the noses of the puke-faced scumbag liars. They are irresponsible Marxists. You are the responsible citizens of the United States of America. Act accordingly. Read the history of the militia. Read the purpose that the militia was founded by our forefathers. A word which one of the president's cabinet members, when she was the president of a university, outlawed on campus. Founding fathers, forefathers, was outlawed. How about that? 
general military law, personnel, the militia. The militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age and, except as provided in Section 313 of Title 32, under 45 years of age who are or who have made a declaration of intention to become citizens of the United States and the female citizens of the United States who are members of the National Guard. And it goes on to say, ladies and gentlemen, that any citizen who has served honorably in any of the military services of the United States of America is a militia member until age 65. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The Constitution of the United States of America, Amendment 2, 1791. Because freedom, yours, and mine is ultimately dependent upon the rights guaranteed by these words, it is imperative that we understand their meaning. A militia, ladies and gentlemen, is an armed citizenry, which according to the American Heritage Dictionary is not a part of the regular armed forces, but is on call for service in an emergency. The Federalist Papers show that the militia referred to in the Second Amendment is, quote, the armed citizenry, end quote. It is the right of the people, not the right of any government entity which is protected. The active clause in the second article in Amendment to the Constitution is the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, and the descriptive clause is a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. Under the law, it is the active clause that determines the meaning of the law. The security of a free state clearly presupposes that the state, the citizenry, is free, and needs to secure that freedom by defending the Constitution of the United States, the guarantor of that freedom, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The exact words in the oath that I took when I entered the United States Air Force and then later the United States Navy. I have never foregone that oath and never will. And that includes any enemies, including the socialist, lying, puke-faced propaganda arm of the communist news networks. Enemies foreign obviously refers to entities, ladies and gentlemen, or governments not of our country. Enemies domestic can only refer to an entity or government of our country. In effect, a government which would choose to make itself an enemy of the people by depriving its citizens of their constitutional rights. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called tyranny, and it is exactly what William Clinton and this traitorous Congress, with their contract with America, is going to do if you allow them to push through the draconian liberty-erasing legislation that they are now crying for. It's called tyranny. And the primary reason for and purpose of a militia, an armed citizenry, a militia available to a government of the people, but beyond the purview of a government against the people, and that is why the officers of the government cannot belong to the militia. To place the militia beyond the purview of a government against the people is to secure the freedom of the people against such a government. Why do I have to do this for you? You're American citizens. It is your duty, your obligation to know the law. It's your duty and obligation to know the history of this country. It is your duty and obligation to understand the Constitution and what liberty means and the responsibilities that are attached to it. Thomas Jefferson 
in a letter to James Madison said that a bill of rights is what the people are entitled to against every government on earth, general and particular. Again, in his very first inaugural address, he included among the essential principles of our government a well-disciplined militia. And if militias don't meet in practice, they cannot be well-disciplined. He also included the supremacy of the civil over the military authority. And should we wonder from these principles in moments of error and alarm, let us hasten to retrace our steps and to regain the road which alone leads to peace, liberty, and safety. End quote. We the people. Everyone say that. Open your mouth and say this. We the people. The citizenry have both a right and a responsibility individually and collectively to keep and bear arms in order to defend ourselves against all enemies of our Constitution and the rights and freedoms thereby guaranteed. What kind of arms? Any kind it takes. And if they attempt to take our liberties and freedoms and our Constitution away from us, we have the right... No, the duty, the responsibility to resist with all means and all instruments available to us are that we can get our hands on, are that we can invent or manufacture with no restrictions whatsoever. Because not to do so does not guarantee liberty, but slavery. Obviously, Arms must be kept and borne in a responsible manner in order to serve the constitutionally stated need and purpose. The Second Amendment is not concerned, as some absurdly would suggest, with hunting and sporting rights, albeit these rights exist, along with the right to defend our lives and property. The fundamental intent of the Second Amendment is to arm the citizenry to defend itself against, quote, every government on earth, End quote, foreign or domestic, which would make itself an enemy of the people by violating their constitutionally protected rights. The government doesn't know this. They've forgotten it, or they've intentionally subverted it, but the government is the servant of an armed citizenry. That's why the government hates an armed citizenry, because the government doesn't want to be the servant. They want to be the master, and they want us to be the slaves. It is the tyrant over an unarmed citizenry. The government is a servant of an armed citizenry. It is the tyrant over an unarmed citizenry. Witness the many tragic illustrations of this deplorable state around the world. Look what has happened to every people who have allowed themselves to be disarmed. Very shortly thereafter, they became slaves. No government by the people and for the people needs fear the arms of the people. Let me say that again so that you understand it. And those of you in the government and in the press better listen. Because what you're doing today is not a reflection upon us. It is a reflection upon you and the response to your dictatorial arrogance is the militia. No government by the people and for the people needs fear the arms of the people. Only a government against the people and their rights need fear their arms. To lay down our arms is to transfer all power, all control, from the people to the government, thereby destroying not securing our freedom, for which once men were willing to die, and many of us are still willing to die. The price of liberty, as Thomas Jefferson and others have warned, is eternal vigilance. Now this, folks, is not to be construed as an indictment against our present government. But vigilance requires that we be ever aware that tyrannies 
have arisen both from within and from without, throughout history. And it will never change. That history, indeed, often repeats itself, and that it can happen here. And many of us believe that it already is. And I think many more believe that than is properly understood. My fellow citizens, dear listeners, those of you who have been listening to this broadcast for a long, long time, those who are just beginning to listen, those who may be turning in for the first time, arise from your indifference. Come out of the fog. Awaken. Pull the wool back from over your eyes. Stop being sheeple. Take a stand. Unite. Advise your congressmen of your resolve. Remind them that their duty is to serve the people as provided by our Constitution and that any action which would violate our constitutional rights will not be tolerated. And don't neglect to thank those congressmen who support and defend our rights. Form militias. Join militias. Arm yourselves. Take the responsibility that the law and the traditions of this country require of responsible, patriotic, constitutionally committed citizens of the United States of America and of the several states. And understand that the militia is the final protection of the people against all enemies from without or within. It is truly the last and only legal and proper law enforcement body in this nation. Its purpose, according to the Constitution, is to repel invasion, suppress insurrection, and get this, folks, enforce the laws of the Union. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now take all this and shove it down these puke-faced Marxist, lying, communist news networks, creeps, throats. Stick it in their ears. And if you can, stuff it up there, you know what. It is absolutely imperative that we not allow this to happen. They have an agenda. It's one world totalitarian socialist government which cannot become a reality if Americans do not give up their guns. The biggest thorn in their paw right now is the militia. And that's exactly the way our forefathers intended it to be. And that's the way it is. And I'm going to tell you right now, whatever decision you may make, if they ever come for my weapons, I will die on my doorstep defending my rights rather than surrender and live in a socialist totalitarian regime. And that is exactly what is coming. If they come against the legal and lawful constituted militia, it is the duty of the militia to resist and oppose them by whatever means necessary. And that is exactly what our founding fathers intended, and that is exactly the way it must be. To act in any other manner is irresponsible. It is to give up liberty in the face of fear. And if you give up liberty in the face of fear, you have no life to live. For if that fear is indicative of what is coming, then what is coming after you are disarmed will be much, much worse than that initial fear. I will not live under tyranny. To provide means of communication for a nationwide militia, we have formed, and we will continue to form, and we will continue to educate, and to train, and to drill, and to be ready. 
And as long as that happens, we will remain free. And the day that it stops, that it ceases to happen, we will cease to be free. And the day that Americans give up their weapons, they will become slaves. For a government of and for the people cannot and will not ever fear an armed citizenry. But a government that fears an armed citizenry would be a tyrant. Title 18, United States Code Service, Section 1385. Use of Army and Air Force as posse comitatus, whoever, except in cases and under circumstances expressly authorized by the Constitution or Act of Congress, willfully uses any part of the Army or the Air Force as a posse comitatus or otherwise to execute the laws, shall be fined not more than $10,000 or imprisoned not more than two years or both. And they are doing this constantly all across the country. It is the militia that they are supposed to call up, not the military, because the militia will think twice before they injure the rights or the property or the person of their fellow citizens. But the military has no such worry. In the report of the Subcommittee on the Constitution of the Committee on the Judiciary, United States Senate, 97th Congress, 2nd Session, February 1982, on page 11, it says this, quote, The militia refers to a concept of a universally armed people, not to any specifically organized unit. When the framers referred to the equivalent of our National Guard, they uniformly used the term select militia and distinguished this from militia. Debates over the Constitution constantly referred to organized militia units as a threat to freedom comparable to that of a standing army, and stressed that such organized units did not constitute and indeed were philosophically opposed to the concept of a militia. That the National Guard is not the militia referred to in the Second Amendment is even clearer today. Congress has organized the National Guard under its power to raise and support armies and not its power to provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia. H.R. Report No. 141, 73rd Congress, 1st Session, 2533. This Congress chose to do in the interest of organizing reserve military units which were not limited in deployment by the strictures of our power over the constitutional militia, which can be called forth only to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. The modern National Guard was specifically intended to avoid status as the constitutional militia. So where does this leave us? Well, as I see it, our elected officials and the members of the news media are no less guilty than any looter or arsonist and should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law for demonizing the legal, constituted, responsible citizens' militia. In fact, you could be said that if we were threatened, what they are doing is treason. And ladies and gentlemen, if what they are doing is to subvert the rights guaranteed by the Constitution and force draconian legislation which would cause the president to become dictator and the government to become an empirical force, then it is treason. Read the Federalist Papers, number 24 through 34. The Federalist Papers, number 24 through 34. It says in there, for example, quote, If the representatives of the people betray their constituents, there is then no resource left but in the exertion of that original right of self-defense which is paramount to all positive forms of government. 
and in Federalist Papers No. 28, Section 6, quote, it may safely be received as an axiom in our political system that the state governments will, in all possible contingencies, afford complete security against the invasions of public liberty by the national authority. And in Federalist Papers No. 28, Section 8, Well, that's what I just read you. <laughs> that was it. When a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object events as they design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 17 and 76. And there's much, much more, folks, but we only have an hour. Read the Uniform Code of Military Justice, for that is our manual. If you understand all of this and you would like to be a responsible citizen, whether you join the intelligence service or not, either form or join a militia, do it properly and correctly under the law. Good night, and God bless you all. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Something's not right. Throw out your arms. Let me not pass through. We're here from the government. We're here to help you. And I'm from the IRS with a power attack. If you've got a complaint, send us a fact. Get out of this house. Surrender your taxes. Give me your gold. You better obey if you want to move. Now to the death cell and do what you're told. Hillary Salawa, Reno Janet Dyke, reading the words of General Albert Pike, the money founder of the Ku Klux Klan, engineer of the Masonic Master Plan. Pike said, Lucifer is God now across this land. And Clinton's saying, take the mark in your right hand. While we're all dancing to the drums of Upworld Right, Clinton's preparing it for another huge pack. Pike. Order out of chaos, depression,